Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. A massive one today. We have an opportunity to chat with the OG himself, Mr. Peter Finch. I'm super excited to bring you guys this interview. This was shot live at the open. You're probably seeing this like a week or so after, but it was shot live at the open. Pete's working it and he was on the range at the time. Now I'm gonna warn you right now, unfortunately his video came in like it was shot on an absolute potato. But if you think that I was gonna ask one of the original two basically big YouTubers in the world to uh, move to a better Wi-Fi location because the video wasn't coming through clear to me, you're crazy. And he is busy and he's in the middle of stuff. So he took some time to do this. I really appreciate it. It's very interesting. So I hope you guys are able to watch it. We're going to do our best to kind of like add some more visuals to make it interesting for you. Um, but yeah, I do apologize for the absolute potato video quality coming through on him. Um, but you're going to see me crystal clear. So that's good. Anyway, if you guys enjoy these interviews, hit that subscribe button. Let's get into it. Dude, how are you? How are you doing, man? I appreciate you coming on. I was saying right before we caught off that I promise I didn't just like put a gun to your head and say you have to come on and do this interview from the open because I'm sure you're busy as heck. It was fully you being a nice guy and willing to do it but talk me through the last but, couple of days yeah i mean it's it's a bit of a weird one really because i'm doing um doing the show called live from the range so it's kind of like doing interviews and uh like looking at people's swings kind of on the range but when the final tea times are done uh i'm kind of done as well so right. as soon as it comes to four o'clock our time kind of show finishes and then i've got a little bit of free time so i thought why not jump on with you the range and have a nice little chat i appreciate it i appreciate it well it's great to connect with you man you're one of the first i mean you and rick were the first two channels i ever watched in like the youtube golf world and i mean i think it's obviously also probably the case for a lot of people because you are two of the most og creators in the space i'd love to hear from you just a bit about that journey like i know you kind of had a similar one you're a teaching professional kind of started making instructional videos and then working into the channel but just like a quick kind of how you fell into YouTube mm -hmm. and when you really kind of fell in love with it. Yeah, I, to be honest, it was it was nothing. It was kind of like a slow build, but it was all about it was all about coaching. It was all about lesson. So I moved to a driving range where uh, Rick was already coaching, and his diary was by far the fullest. And the other thing that he was doing was different. Yeah. Um, that a lot of the other coaches there was just doing YouTube videos. So I didn't know literally anything about youtube at that point so just started uploading a few videos and started getting more lessons and yeah that's that's basically how we started and, and how it carried on there's uh, it's, it's one of those things where a lot of people do kind of message me and contact me and say you know i want to start a channel all the rest of it but i, I wouldn't have been able to start the channel unless the youtube videos were actually driving lessons because i wouldn't have been able to afford to actually kind of take the time to do it so it was, it was just a way of marketing myself as a coach it was simple as that obviously it's it's changed completely now um i'm you know doing <laughs> things here at the open which is not quite what i would have expected a few years ago yeah yeah man when did you kind of have that switch in your brain it was i kind of when was it actually well i think when me and rick left uh, kind of traffic set up our own little academy that was a that was a point where it became clear that we could drop days coaching um and when we made videos the videos wouldn't cause like a drop in business revenue simple as that really. so it was a case of saying we could take more days out coaching build more content and the content will fill that breach then it was another day off coaching then another day then another day until eventually a couple of years ago it was it just didn't make sense to carry on coaching because we'd only be doing like one day a week realistically uh, and if you want to be a really good coach um i mean I'm, i can still i can still give lessons i still think i'm a decent coach but if you want to be a really really good coach you have to yeah you have to get the reps in you have to be on the range you have to go on to courses with clients so it's always something i can go back to as well but for now, it just became obvious that I had to do more videos. Right. Yeah. Understandable. I mean, I think the the interesting yeah. part in my brain is like, when when did the, or was there like a greater passion for the YouTube stuff than the coaching stuff? Or was there like a really distinct shift in your brain where you're like, not only like, is this making money now, but it's like, I actually like doing this more. Or was it always kind of 50-50? It, it, it was 50-50 it was until the point, I think... 
it, it definitely had a shift in my brain when we started to do more course vlog based content and I was seeing people kind of watch those videos and enjoy those videos more than the coaching videos. And there was a little bit of a light bulb moment. And I, I, I'm sure you'll, you'll understand this in the right way. I was like making course vlogs and people were watching them. And I was like, I'm like, how am I getting away with this? Like, how am I, how am I, how am I, me, like a perfectly average pro making videos? about playing golf and people really like and watch them. I just had, to, to be honest, to this day, it still baffles me a little bit. Um, and once that was the case, because obviously, you know, I've, I've always enjoyed playing golf. It's, you know, it's the passion that I kind of grew up with. So to be able to play golf, film it, and make a living from that, that's, that's amazing. It's incredible. So, you know, once that became apparent that it was possible, then, yeah, it was kind of all, all in. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think it's, I think it's a funny realization for all of us. <laughs> it's like you're, you're making content, whatever that content is. And you have that feeling of like, yeah, why me kind of thing. It's almost like a slight bit of imposter syndrome. Did you ever have any like guilt in making that switch over to YouTube? Like feeling maybe like, you know, you needed to do the responsible thing and stay in coaching or, you know, you didn't want to leave your clients, let people down. Or was there any like thing like that? Or was it just... <laughs> Yeah, maybe. I, I think there's also like a bit of a bit of insecurity around, around it as well, yeah. because you know, bear in mind when when I started doing YouTube videos like ten years ago, ten years ago now, it was it was completely new. Like no one really knew what it was about, um, and now it's got to the point where you know it is it is a it's a legitimate job in many people's eyes. You know, when when kids are asked what they want to be when they're old, like one of the most popular suggestions now is a YouTuber, which is absolutely wild to me. It's crazy how quickly it changes. Um, so there was definitely a little bit of, definitely a little bit of imposter syndrome as well, because, you know, we come from a background of, you know, I'm not a, I, now I am a, a video creator, if you want to look at it like that. I am a content creator, but, you know, we didn't come to this from that background. You know, I was a, a golf pro, a golf coach. I, I took a few years out to do journalism, but that was, you know, newspaper journalism. It wasn't anything to do with video. So it was a completely new field. Um, you know, really, really just having to learn as we went. Um, and trying to, it, it is still a case of like we're making it up a little bit as we go along. And it's been like that for quite some time. Totally. Dude, well, you guys, you guys made up a lot of what YouTube golf is. You know, like it's not just you making it up on your own it's like a lot of what you guys did has set the archetype for what youtube golf is today i'd love to hear your thoughts about kind of having started 10 years ago before any of the you know of channels we know today were really here other than youtube and how the how the space has shifted like do you have any takes on on where it is today what the content's like anything like that yeah it's it, it's crazy i mean the the amount of First of all, the amount of YouTube channels focused around golf now is, you know, huge. It's, it's absolutely massive. Like when when I started, there was maybe 10, 15. Like you had Mark Crossfield, did started a long time before. You had me in like golf. Um, it was like the real, real kind of OGs of, of most of this. And everyone followed the same pattern. Yeah, you, know, you were a golf pro. You started making coaching videos. Then you branched out. You did something a little bit different. Um, I think the the key, and we're really lucky with this, really. And I'm I'm always also trying and experimenting with new types of videos. So my channel wasn't really kind of pigeonholed into making certain types of content. So it wasn't my channel's not just a coaching channel. It's not just a course vlog channel. It's not just an equipment channel. You know, I'm I'm free to make different types of videos. And that wasn't that again. It wasn't by design. It was just lucky, you know. And now I'm in a position where I can make all kinds of videos, and it doesn't. It, it still makes sense. It doesn't look out of place. Um, and like certainly over the last three years, uh, we've seen just a, an absolute explosion of new channels. And it was always confusing to us why there was never that many um, big YouTube golf channels based in the States. Like so many of them were UK based to begin with. And it just didn't make any sense. Because if you think about what happens, um, what happens weather-wise, you know, what happens course-wise, what happens facility-wise in the US compared to the UK. 
you know, you guys over there have got, especially if you live in somewhere like Florida or California, it's a dream ticket. Like you can, you can film and you can play and you can do things all year round. So that's been a, a certain, not trend, but a, a new thing, which has certainly exploded within the last four or five years, which is good. Again, it's fantastic. And I think the, the best thing about all these new channels coming into it is it, is it challenges me to, and my guys to make better videos. Like, you know, it was maybe not that long, maybe a year and a half ago when using the shot tracer app to do shot tracers was perfectly acceptable. Now, all of a sudden, if you don't use after, after effects to do your shot tracers, you know, you're not, you're not investing the time into doing that. You know, you're not taking time over your thumbnails. You're not taking time over your video ideas. It, it does show. And it, it's good because it, it keeps pushing everybody onwards. Yeah, you, know, you can't just you can't just make these kind of simple videos anymore. You have to put a little bit more effort. Into it. And I think that's good. And yeah, it's good for it's good for us because it's a challenge, but it's also good for the people who are watching the videos because the the quality of the content keeps improving. Right. Do you love it the same as you did, or like where oh. where are you at with YouTube right now? Like, is it? Oh yeah, I'm 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 loving it much more than I used to. I I think it's because it was always a means. It was always a means to an end. So. Yeah. It was a case of saying, okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna make videos and then the reason I'm making videos is just to get more coaching, to get more lessons. Then it morphed into, you know, I'm doing I'm doing more videos, but my main focus is still coaching. Then it's kind of changed, it's changed, it's changed, and now it's just purely focused on video. So it, it it's a strange thing to say, but like over the last kind of three years, four years, a lot of my a lot of the videos I was making was based around me playing in comps. Um, and like in looking at the results of those and what was happening, but now I'm not playing in any professional events. My focus is like fully on video, so it, it almost feels like this is my first full year of doing it, which sounds oh, quite cool. strange considering I've been doing it for like ten years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry if my voice is sorry. Sorry if my voice is going and I'm mumbling a bit. I've been <laughs> talking crap literally all day. No, you're good. Like, you're like, great. Yeah. I, I don't, Honestly, I've been I've been watching I've been watching back some of these live videos I've done, and I've, I never knew I could talk so much waffle. It's absolutely incredible. So if I do start mumbling, just just shout at me. No, you're good. You're good, dude. Yeah, I mean it's cool to hear, dude, because it's like I think that's the that's something I've always been curious about is like a decade creator who's been doing it on the platform for that long. Like, do you still have that same passion for it? I mean. I think your unique scenario where you're like you're you're kind of feeling like now is your first opportunity to really be like I'm just a YouTuber full time like that's a relatively recent thing for you, but even still to have the passion to to up the production quality to to make better thumbnails to come up with better ideas because that really is what it takes now. You're right. You have to be pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing, and if not, there's seven other channels that are going to step in front of you. You know? Yeah, yeah. And and it is worth it's worth saying as well that. Uh, um, so, you know, if you look at the guys who are making, uh, the most new content out, you know, you're looking at your good, good, you're looking at Rick, um, you know, something which I've tried to do as well as them is to also hire people. So I've got yeah. four people working for me now. Um, and it's really, it's kind of those guys who have, you know, really pushed everything on because at the end, at the end of the day, at the heart of things, even though I think I'm getting much better at understanding what works and. And making videos i am still just i'm a golf coach that's my background so to get people in who know more about video production and who can do the things that i'm not able to that's what's able to to push the business on so i've been trying to i've been trying to hire somebody new every year um and i've managed to do that for the last four so hopefully i can get someone else on board this year who can i don't know do something that i can't do which is which is a lot like there's, there's a lot of there's, there's a lot of positions to fill. <laughs> yeah, you need a, you need a co-host for your rough cut yeah. rough cut podcast. You just let me know. I'd be happy to fill that position. That sounds like a neat position right there. Oh, oh well, you know I've I've already got I've already got three of the guys who are doing it. So you know I would have to sack one of them, mate. So <laughs> okay, I don't you, want that. You, all right, I don't yeah, want oh that. man, this is no, no, no. The guy the guy's staying at the campsite here at the open as well. So I'm going to go over after this and I'm going to say, listen. I'm really sorry about this. I've just been on with Nate. One of you's got to go. <laughs> yeah, and I mean the the worst part is, is I would do it. I would do it for free. You don't even have to pay me. So I mean, then you'd be saving money too. Oh, so fantastic. 
this, this, sounds, this sounds like a great plan. <laughs> <laughs> what what kept you in the UK versus the US? When you say the US had so much more, you realize it had so much more prime content, whether it be opportunities or just seasonality. What kept you over in the UK as the channel side exploding? Um, I mean, obviously my you know, my family and everything is still kind of over over here and I, I, I want to try and get to a position where I can spend, you know, six months in the UK, kind of over the summer months and then six months wherever that be in the world, you know, where it is nice and nice and sunny. It's 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 one of those things where uh, like the UK especially recently, like the UK is like it's just it's a bit crap at times. Like, like the weather's not great. Like the courses can be wet. It can just be a bit grim. You know, it could be a bit depressing to live here. But at the same time, like we don't really have any tornadoes. You know, there's there's no kind of like massive heat. There's no massive heat waves. Um, people are generally all right. You know, it's it's yeah. it's, it's it's a place where there's nothing really too extreme going on. Uh, and then as soon as it gets round to the summer, like playing links golf in the summer in the uk is is my favorite thing to do i it's it's the best in my opinion it's the best form of golf it's incredible to you know be out on those sunlit nights where the shadows are falling over the dunes and you, you don't you don't really get that authenticity of the links really anywhere else and you know th- those are the moments that when i play golf i feel like the most you know the most excited and the most kind of like pleased and you know just unbelievably happy to be doing what i'm doing so i wouldn't want to give that up yeah dude i mean i think it sounds if you're not looking for extremes it sounds like you need to come to where i am which is canada vancouver to be specific we got the best of both worlds you know we got that slight north america without you know well i'm i really want to do so i'm a seahawks fan yeah i want to kind of get over do seattle i want to kind of come up to vancouver yep do some whale watching on the sound you know kind yep. of it's it's somewhere that i've wanted to i wanted to get this is for a long time it's the the one issue i found really like doing youtube all full time this year is the amount of traveling that we've done is it's extraordinary I've, I've, it, not, not not so much just flying because we've flown places but we've stayed there for a long period of time it's more just the driving i've been doing yeah, kind of in the UK, up and down everywhere. It's just yeah. finding some some spare slots to get over. Because if I if I came to Canada, it'd obviously have to be in the summer. Well, not obviously, but better in the summer, and then you know spending spending two three weeks there to make the most of it. But it's definitely a place I want to come. The courses look amazing over there as well. So I got I got an invite actually to go to uh, play some courses around Banff this year, uh, and I couldn't make it in the end. It was like it was a couple of weeks ago, and looking at the pictures that some of the people will post I'm a bit I'm a bit gutted I didn't make it yeah yeah and then up here we got Whistler really close by and so yeah like so many unreal courses up in that area it's like mountain golf galore so uh, yep you ever come here man we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely get out it's a great part of the world but what do you think about we talked about the emergence of all these new channels like is there anything that you feel like has been we talked about improvement and trying to make stuff better. Like what specifically do you think these new channels kind of brought to the table that you like, or maybe what's an aspect of the new YouTube that you're maybe not as much of a fan of? I think obviously the, the, the variety is good because it brings more personalities into it. Um, and you look at channels like, yeah, you know, I, did, I did some filming with the guys from good, good a couple of weeks ago. Um, and just their like demeanor and the way that they go about things on the golf course it it's something new it, it's something which you know i wouldn't i i couldn't really replicate um and there's there's so much choice now and so many personalities that if you are a watcher of youtube content you can find kind of people to watch that you like you know i'm i'm, I'm a little generally i'm a little bit more kind of reserved um and if you don't want that, if you want someone to be like super outlandish, if you want like these crazy challenges, you've got, you know, Bob the Swartz, for example, you know, they, they, and this is the thing, like they're incredibly new to the platform. They're bringing something completely different. You know, if you want just to go on YouTube for your coaching, you've got someone like uh, Danny Maud or 
you know, that's why we started the, the Swing Quest channel so you can have access to just coaching. The, the amount of choices is fantastic. And and this week, something that it has allowed us to do is, you know, five, six years, well, definitely 10 years ago when I started, there was absolutely no chance that I would have been invited to do live TV stuff from the open. Like I was, I was just logging it away in a freezing range in Manchester. So there's no, there's no way that I would have been invited to things like this. So, you know, having a, having a platform um, on YouTube and on social media has allowed me and has allowed other people on the platform to, to get access and to get the opportunities to do more mainstream types of media, which is, again, it's, it's completely unheard of. It's, it's something which is new. It's, you know, the, the mainstream media, even though you, you could make an argument really that the place to be now is more on YouTube rather than mainstream. Um, they are looking for people to fit into roles, which, you know, they, they would have looked elsewhere previously, but now they're looking at social media they're looking at YouTube and seeing, okay, well, this guy seems to have an audience, you know, involved in golf. Let's give him a go. Big mistake with me, but. <laughs> no, it's great, man. It's super cool. Has your passion for the game changed at all? The more you've gone down this YouTube road, like now that you, Literally, your job is, a lot of the time is just to film yourself playing golf. Do you ever feel it pulling on you, and you're like, Ooh, "Yeah, I'd... yeah, yeah." I know, I know what you mean. I think the only the other thing that's really changed so much is the actual social aspect of golf. So when I when I go out to a course now, if I don't have a camera, with me, it kind of feels a bit weird. It feels like I'm almost wasting my time, um, and you know, I used to used to play a lot with my dad, for example. I think we've only played maybe twice this year. So it's that you know, it's that aspect of just going out to the golf course, just playing for the fun of it. Even though I still enjoy playing golf, obviously I mean, it is still fun. It's it's not a case that you know I can just like go out a few times a week and grab grab eighteen holes. It's that's changed a little bit. Now that's more down to me and like planning time. But as far as the actual love for the game, you know, it's that's not diminished and it's just given me, you know, it's given me more and more opportunities as well. So, you know, it, it's, it's a gift that really does just keep on giving at the moment. Yeah. I feel that allowance thing a little bit. Like I've started to feel that a tiny bit recently with like, yeah, every time I go, I'm like, oh, this would be an opportunity to film and like, why not do it? You know, you always have that kind of why not, why wouldn't yeah. I film this? Why shouldn't I? Whatever. But I also feel like there's like probably something to be said. And I'd like your thoughts on this of like, that almost like work-life balance, you know, of like still forcing yourself to get out there and play those fun rounds, whether it be with your dad or with friends or whatever, just to like, you know, take your mind yeah. off and decompress a little bit. Yeah, I suppose. I think I think something which is probably quite important as well is to have is to maybe have another hobby, uh, which is mm -hmm. outside that. Um, unfortunately, I don't. So that's <laughs> and I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, yeah. No, not, no, no days off the no days off the moment. So just sit at home. And, just do nothing so yeah I'd, yes. rather, I'd rather work at the moment well that's um, it it's the so blessing and the that's curse that's my goal for the, the end of this year <laughs> it's the blessing and the curse of people i guess who have turned their hobbies into jobs because it's like literally for me i run into that problem all the time where it's like the only two things i like to do with my time are make youtube videos and play golf and work out but like those three things have found their way on part of my job now. And so it's like, I'm either like making too many YouTube videos, which is not a good thing for YouTube. I sometimes have to like check myself or I'm like addictively playing golf every day or what, you know what I mean? So it's like, it is, I want to be like, I need another hobby, but I'm like, these are my three favorite things to do. I don't want to do anything else. Like this is what I want to do with my time, you know? Yeah, exactly. I think, you know, my, yeah, to be honest, my main, my main other hobby I like doing is going to the pub. Oh, I can't really do that too often, or that'll, that'll catch up with you as well. So, I need, yeah, I do need to find something a little bit healthier. You've been, you've been speaking again healthier though, man. I mean, I don't know about healthier, but you've been getting stronger and better, and your swings have been getting more dialed, and you've been playing some like incredible golf. You're hitting the ball a country mile every time you swing a golf club. What's that been like? Have you been really dialing that in, or has that just come naturally? It, it, to be honest, it's a little bit because I'm not playing, I'm not playing golf anymore, so something which i have found is where i would be playing a course and you know it's a 300 odd yard carry to clear some danger i'm not i'm not pulling an iron out anymore and laying up because i'm like well 
what's the point? I'll make it a YouTube video, just get the dryer around, just smash it as hard as I can. So it's been quite uh, liberating to do that. My golf has definitely suffered as a whole, though, because it's just, I'm, I'm either going out there and shooting, and I'll go out there and shooting AE or, or you know, on the par. So it's nothing nothing in between. My short game is shocking at the moment, so God, I'm crap. Uh, but it's not, um, it's just a case because I've not been, I've not been practicing. Like I'm going to the, I'm trying to get to the gym more, but like you said, you, en- like you enjoy working out. I'm, I'm using the gym very much as a, as a tool to try and, you know, get there and to, and to help, you know, help my overall health levels. But yeah, I don't, uh, it's, 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 I could never turn, I could never turn it into a hobby. I guess, because of where my gym is as well, I'm going to walk past I gotta walk past loads of pubs to get there as well. It's very cruel. Whenever we link up next, we'll get a workout in together. I'll show you some stuff. It's it can be fun, sort of maybe. I don't know. It's been part of my life forever, which I think helps. But talk to me about because where I really noticed that you're hitting golf ball so much further was those videos with Rick, where his reaction was like someone who's known you forever and watching you play and just like I don't I didn't remember him like bigging you up that much with your drives and so I'm like oh this guy's hitting the ball further. That's been like a resurgence because I remember like maybe six months ago or so there was like a podcast you put out where it was like you guys weren't really collaborating anymore and whatever. But now it's like I feel like you guys have collaborated like four, three or four times in the last like couple months. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's yeah. To be honest, he, he was he was picking me up, but he had to because I was I was listening past me on my three wood. Wow. Just, just, just hold on a second. I want to check two things. First, is this legal? Because that actually went a country mile. Second, you've been you've been working out. So, if it didn't, uh, if it, if it didn't pick me up, it would have uh, would have reflected very badly. Um, yeah, yeah. I think again, I, I have been changing some things in my swing to try and get a little bit more, a little bit more distance. But it's that case of it's not allowed me to. To keep a level of consistency, so <laughs> something I'm going to be trying to work on, uh, work on till the end of this year is just trying to try to get a little bit more rhythm back in the swing, uh, which is which is sort of uh, again, it's that it's having that time to be able to actually work on it. You know, it's not uh, yeah, not the easiest thing to do. Or on the on the content specific side with you guys, because I feel like there was you had released kind of like a podcast or something like maybe five, six months ago about the lack of collaboration that you guys haven't really clapped in a long time. But then I feel like out of the last like two, three months, there has been a bunch of videos come out that have all done like relatively well between the two of you. Yeah, I think it was a case of um, with with the videos and it, it is a thing where, you know, Rick's, Rick's only going to be doing videos that, you know, really gonna help push him forward and to get the most the maximum amount of views and this is this is something which is across youtube as a whole um you know chances are that you know i get a lot of messages from from kind of like channels wanting to do collaborations like new channels and, and channels with less subscribers and like we have made a conscious effort to try and film with as many new people this year as possible but it comes a point where it's like well if I've got a choice to collaborate with, let's say I message Rick and he's got a choice to collaborate with me or he's got a choice to collaborate with Good Good. Right. Like from a from a, from a video sense, like it, it makes more to collaborate with Good Good. It's kind of as simple as that. And it's, there's nothing nothing personal about it. Like it is, it is what it is. Um, but I think what we've tried to do a little bit more this year is find videos that we can collaborate on, that we can work together on, yes. that are all going to get those views. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, like we were saying before about like the the need to c- continually up the uh, production value with the videos, to continually up um, the videos that people want to watch. It is a case that we can't just go out and like do a nine hole match and. Yeah, you know, right. if we're going to go out and do some filming, we're going to go out and make a really good video. Yeah, it's a case of saying, okay, what's the idea? You know, what's the thumbnail going to be? You know, what what are we going to do to get this video to the maximum amount of people? And that's what it takes to kind of get a video that breaks through. Now, um, yeah, I'm not, I, I, I'm not that good at that 
just yet. I'm getting better. But one thing which Rick has done incredibly well, really, for the last four or five years is managed to release videos and pick video topics that are very watchable that people want to click on. Mm. You know, that's why he's that's why he's got the most subscribers. That's why he's smashing them. You know, he has mm-hmm. that he has that ability to really kind of switch into what people want to watch, which is a really good skill to have. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I think the thing that was neat for me to see was how well the videos of YouTube really did. And I feel like maybe both of you are kind of like maybe pleasantly surprised with like really how much they hit. Cause like there were some, uh, even on his channel, like there were some of his most viewed videos out of the last like 10 or 20 um, was especially that recent collab you guys did. Like they absolutely smashed it. Yeah. I, th- I think it's a, uh, obviously when you, when you don't do something for a while as well. So, yep. you know, we hadn't filmed a proper full length course vlogs together for a while before the golf video videos came out, yep. for example. Um, so people hadn't sent emails together in a video for ages. So it was always that case of having, you know, that ability to make a video, uh, to make a video, which hadn't been done for a while and people would enjoy it. And we know when we make a golf video video together that um, the views generally are really good. So yeah, it was good. It was good kind of kicking off points of the year. I mean, hopefully we'll, we'll get some more stuff in before the end of the year, going into early next year as well. So. You know, again, if it's something that people want to watch, then yeah, we'll we'll definitely make more of them. Yeah, yeah. Was it ever like weird, but like you guys being the two like OG, both UK based, both kind of started on the same trajectory. Was it, was there ever like a, a competition kind of between you two, or was it always kind of you were willing to collaborate? I, um, no, no. I, well, I, I know that Rick likes kind of competition. Mm-hmm. Um, I. I think he probably would have hoped that I would have managed to keep pace with him, kind of views and subscribers. So he he had something to kind of aim at. But yeah, no. So for, for me, for me, there there wasn't. You know, it's it's always a nice thing to be able to you know film and kind of collaborate with your friends. So yeah, it, it was a good, you know, it was a good starting point. And you know, like as we said, the way the way that Rick's gone about it is is absolutely smashed it. And I think it's a very good. Like if you look back at his videos kind of over like the last few years, it's a really good template to follow how he's managed to, to keep on those trends and, and to keep pushing forwards. Absolutely. Do you think there's anything in your mind right now as someone who's been in this YouTube golf space for a long time that's like severely, not severely lacking, but that is lacking or that's like an open area that you think could be filled? Speaking of like, you know, new creators, new content, is there anything that uh, you see a gap in right now? Interesting. I suppose this is what um, I, I suppose this is kind of a little bit what we just spoke about there about being able to identify something which might be missing yeah. and to make videos about it. Mm-hmm. I know even if I think of it right now, like should should I even say? Should yeah, I, I guess should I, I guess. just go straight. Should can, I should I not go straight to the laptop and start making? It? <laughs> yeah, can we privatize um, IP? I mean, I, yes. I mean, I think we're just, um, we just, we, uh, to be fair, like, we, we have just mentioned something a second ago with um, with Bob the Sport. So, you know, they've managed to, I know, I know Perez is a decent player, but like they've managed to find this little bit of a gap in the market where when you tune in to Bob the Sports, they've got some good guests, but like you're not tuning in for the pure quality of the golf. Let's put it that way. You're tuning in because what they provide more than anything else is just really good entertainment mm-hmm. and you know that is something which I, I struggle to kind of get my head around for like for a couple of years because in my mind because I started with the coaching video and because it's probably a little bit more in my comfort zone mm-hmm. what I want to do with all my videos is I want to somehow add value whether it's by information whether it's by coaching whether mm-hmm. it's it's like club reviews, you know, kind of information based. But what channels like Bob the Sport and you know, good good with that, uh, with a lot of their challenges and like the the major series, which has done really well for them. You know, it's just about entertainment. It's uh-huh. just about people watching golf for the pure joy of watching golf. Um, and that's something which I, I kind of struggle to get my head around for a, for a while, probably because you know a little bit of the. Uh, imposter syndrome that we spoke about before you know thinking mm-hmm. you know why why would people just watch golf why why would they do that right um 
and it's something that yeah i can get my head around for a bit but i'm, I'm starting to i'm starting to understand it now i love it i love I'm it finally it's right, always well, been, no, it's always been my problem. I'm all, I'm always two years late to everything. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I'm not going to keep you too much longer, man, because I know you've had a long day. But I would love if there's anything um, that you have coming up that's like super exciting or new or what's kind of going on the end of the year um, or the second half of the year, I guess, for you with what you got going on. Um, I've got so I've got the open week. Need to get that out of the way, and then got a couple of weeks where i'm hopefully not doing too much and then the start of the start of august i'm doing a um like a challenge so i'm playing the most northerly course in the uk and then i'm cycling all the way down the length of the country and I'm playing the most southerly course along the way i'm playing 10 different courses doing lots of different challenges um and then <clears throat> that's going to take 20 days so it's 20 days a thousand miles ten courses on the route so that's going to be pretty intense, and because I've never really done, I've never really done anything like this before, like scale wise. So it's a really good test to see if we can figure out how to do it and make it a success. And obviously, the the, the benchmark of it will be eventually is like how much money we managed to raise for charity along the way. So it's going to be a good, it's going to be a good, exhausting twenty days, and then I will reset after that. If I'm still alive and then figure <laughs> out what I'm doing for the rest of the year. I love it. I love it. Cool, man. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. It was super awesome to get you on the channel. Yeah, no, no worries, mate. Sorry if I'm there, if I'm mumbling a little bit. I can, I can slowly feel my brain shutting down as we, as we can, as you can kind of go through. Fortunately, it's not like I've got another two calls to jump on now. So I think, uh, I think I need a, a coffee. Fortunately, oh, I've got four. Fortunately, I've got. I'll tell you what. I'll do. Uh, I'll do a little wander here just to just look at these yachts, just to all right uh, show off a little bit. Yeah, show it so off. One of the one of the good things about this, as soon as you get on the um, basically like the actual accreditation to get anywhere in the open, it's like really tight. Like you're not okay. You're not managing to sneak in anywhere. Okay, but once you actually get in, once you actually get in somewhere, <laughs> you, you can just go anywhere, whatever you want. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, so kind of over here and you see like that wall there yeah so that's got all the um it's, it's, it's one of the cool things it's got all the range balls that are, they're all divided into like the different oh, yeah. manufacturers uh-huh so it's so it's got like cut up now i'll see if i can <laughs> and i go over dude get some free pro v ones have a quick quick nosy in one of your baskets yeah so you've got like like callaway <laughs> got all that like their chrome stuff so you basically got <laughs> I don't know about six, seven hundred balls just laid out with all the different kind of manufacturers here. Wow! Obviously, like I definitely won't. I definitely won't take a basket at the end of the week. So that'd be that'd be wrong of you. And then you, yeah, and then you just get to kind of wander into the oh, yeah. facility, just help yourself to all the drinks and stuff. So that's so that's cool. Thing, that's, that's, thing, that's what I'm going to do because so I'm going to need the uh, I'm going to need the help to see me through. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's awesome well dude, right, again, i appreciate you coming on so much man and i mean we'll definitely have to uh wow look at that i definitely want to come uh come to the uk at some point and i'd love to to meet you maybe play around link up It'd be super cool mate yeah no absolutely absolutely like i said well I hopefully we'll manage, manage to get over to to Canada at some point as well uh -huh. are you coming end of the year for uh, a tournament that shall not be named potentially if that potential tournament does potentially happen? Uh, uh, if the potential tournament potentially happens, I will potentially be there. Nice. But there are other there are other potential tournaments happening before that potential tournament, which I will potentially have to be there for as well. Nice. But I have also potentially got a family holiday, which I will potentially have to let them all down if I potentially make the potential tournament that potentially might be happening. Gotcha. Well, I think it'd be a... Uh... It'd be appreciated by everyone if that, you know, that did happen, but also your family, maybe not. So I guess it's the trade off. Eh? Uh, yeah. You know what? I, you know what? I think they'll probably prefer me if I wasn't there. Uh, <laughs> I, but I think, uh, I'll see what, I'll see what they say. I, I, I haven't seen them for a while, so they might, they might kick off. I love it. All right, man. Well, enjoy your Diet Coke and, uh, enjoy your last, <laughs> last three days work in the open. <laughs> Will do. My, my day's not over yet. Got a bit more to do today, so I'm oh, gonna crack on. All right, lovely. Man. All right. Well, get that caffeine in you. That will do. <laughs> That's right. never an issue.
<laughs> All right. Thanks, buddy. We'll talk to you later. See you, bud. Cool. See you in a bit. See you, dude. Bye.